Hey guys, welcome to Deep South. Today, we're going to be talking about my green stalk. I've had a green stalk now for about six months, and I have grown all kinds of amazing things in it, from lettuce and tomatoes and uh, peppers and basil, and all these things have grown in my green stalk. Uh, a couple of months ago, I added some strawberries. Uh, I'm still letting my tomato plant go. Got a little tomato on it, but we're probably fixing to take that off because something has happened to it. So I'm going to show you what it is and some of the solutions of what I'm fixing to do to continually have something in the green stalk growing that we can eat out of. About a week ago, all these tomato plants were beautiful and green. They weren't curled up like this. They weren't diseased like this. They were all green. There was lots of um, new growth inside, things going on, but look at them now. Everything's just looking crazy. Yellowed leaves, dried up, curled up leaves, all that. This was after the storm. Both of these tomato plants were looking really great last week, even with new blooms and you saw the tomato. Now, this is what they look like after the storm. My carrots, they were all beautiful and green. They've just all died. So we're taking all the carrots out. It's about time to harvest anyway. I'm not sure if we have bugs because you see it looks like something might have eaten half of it. Yep, culprits right here. You see that? There's my culprit. Little worms all over the place. So from last week to this week, something laid these worms on my plants and they have eaten them all. So that doesn't take for this. This died after the rain. We're going to take everything out, see what's going on here, and use some protection for this. I have a netting and we have some um, support so that my tomatoes do not get like this. Because I have it in this little mini greenhouse, the greenhouse shelves are supporting my tomatoes. But green stock has supports. We're going to be adding them. All right, this is the first tier. As you can see, my Malabar spinach is growing, and I want to continue to keep the Malabar in here. So we're going to separate it from the carrots, and what we're going to do is we're just going to pull the carrots up and try to leave the dirt. And I don't expect big carrots, but they're carrots. And this is a variety we got from Hoss Tools. I can't remember the name of them but they're kind of a light colored carrot and i planted too many in here but okay we're gonna fix the dirt where we can plant something back we're gonna be flipping and moving the dirt around and it looks like it's really wet and moist in here and I think that's mainly because of that storm system. We got a lot of rain. And so it, I haven't watered for a few days. And we're going to add more dirt around the Malabar. Break it up. And get the Malabar situated where I know that they're stable in their environment and we're going to take up the rest of these we really only have malabar and three of them growing really well i'm going to take the water thing off and we're going to take the second tier off we're leaving the malabar so i'm putting it in here and once we get the supports on we're going to show you how we're going to do the malabar to keep it just going around the supports. The third tier, as you can see, had some strawberries in it, but because of the tomatoes and stuff, I don't think the strawberries are doing very well. I'm probably gonna take the strawberries out 
make a separate bed because I don't think them and the tomatoes go together very well. This tier was almost all empty, so we're just going to take it out. Most everything had already been pulled out of this one. In the fourth tier, I've got some Malabar in some places that I just put in there that's starting to grow. We've got strawberry that looks like it's okay, but again, I'm taking the strawberries out and putting them somewhere else. Basil that hasn't grown very much because the tomatoes. One tomato plant that's coming out here, and we're going to pull this tomato. We're taking it out. And then in the bottom, I have tomatoes on both sides, so I'm taking all the tomato out now because this is a jungle right now. We've gotten quite a few tomatoes off this, but it's time to retire my tomato jungle. This is an early girl variety indeterminate, and I didn't read that. I should have, but look at this. I'm talking, look at this plant. It grew in the green stalk like this, all propped up. Look at all this. Still green, still putting on blooms. I probably would get a tomato. I even had a little one right here that was starting but this came out of the green stalk look how healthy nothing wrong with it that is, i mean other than bugs and we're taking care of that problem today hopefully but that's what came out of the green stalk and if you watch some of our previous videos like romaine grew to be huge and we ate off of it all winter so that's what's going back in it in a month or so it's too hot here for romaine right now and so right now we're just going to stick some tomato and pepper plants in to see how they fare because they still we still have a lot of hot weather because of the two large tomatoes that were in here i'm turning the soil and look at the roots that were all in there i'm breaking up roots all over the place down in there and we're going to add two tomatoes back in here and this is on a roller base so i can flip it around this is so I can catch the water. You can see, if I do that, you see the water coming out? That means the base is full of water, so it's still feeding these plants that were here. It was holding that water, but if it gets an overflow, it comes out. You can recapture this water. You can put something here, capture it, put it back in the top, and start all over again. So you're not losing the nutrients that you put in your um, top, your fertilizing stuff. You can recapture and reuse the water. So it makes a great off-grid purpose type thing because if the plant doesn't absorb all the water, you can capture what's excess. Okay, so these are the way the uh, supports come packaged in a cloth. It's like a cheesecloth type cotton cloth drawstring bag. They come with six of the rings and six of the extenders and i have four sets here for four of my pots okay so i bought a couple of tomato plants these are called the i don't know if i can find my little thing the solar fire tomatoes and they are determinate so that means i won't have the problems i had before plus i bought a couple of bell peppers and i put one of the tomatoes over there one of the bells back there and I left two places empty on it. Okay, the deal is I have very little room in here for these supports. These are the support extensions. They go in here, you bring them to the front, and clip them there. So we've got six of those, and then we have the support rings. The rings snap together you have a hook in that end that hooks into the other end of the other one like this and the round part fits on here so we're going to put these together and get it around I had to have Danny help me set this one on top so I could hold my plants back because I wanted my plants planted before I put them back up because these are some big plants you always want to put your big plants on the bottom as it comes up and this way your supports are here. When this tomato starts growing, I can weave it in between the supports. 
here we have Malabar spinach again as I put another support this stuff will grow and just weave around everything so we're gonna have lots of Malabar in here and that's gonna be one of my things that's gonna grow on the supports here so I want to show you how these hook together you have this it looks like this and this one like this so you put the little slot in the slot at the top and come down snap together okay so you're forming a ring Got another one here Let's show you and you just snap it together and then where everywhere one of these little holes is that's where it's going to hook to the green stalk uh, support that's in there the little extender okay so after playing with putting these supports together for a few minutes each one just snaps in at the connectors I decided to put them all together lay it on top and now I'm gonna go around and snap them in and make sure they're snapped in there snap them in there check this and make sure it's snapped here and it just makes it so much easier if you've got the ring together because I tried it doing one piece at a time it's a little difficult okay so we have the whole ring the support system all together ready for the next tier and since these are little I'm not too worried about it as I add the next tier it should be okay this is where your water comes through I'm trying to get enough of the trash out okay so each tier has a water container it has little holes in it here it has a hole in the middle if this gets too full it will drain through here otherwise it will just drip drain here feeding all the plants all the way and it is a gravity fed system So using the mini greenhouse has been a challenge, a blessing in some ways, and a challenge with these. It just works out that the next layer of supports fits on top of the shelf. Otherwise, I would have to move the green stalk. So I think that's pretty cool. I think I'm fixing to move my two plants in the back. Um, they've been in this thing all winter, but I think it's time to take them to the cabin and put them out over there and let them do their thing and continue up with the next tier these just stack on top of each other each one has its own little watering tray in the center And this is the top watering tray. You put no dirt in this, and it goes up on top for water. It has holes in it everywhere. It has a hole in the center, but we found that if we put a cap over the hole in the center, it drains out slowly around the bottom. So you can take this off. It's not, it's just something we did to give it a slow, gradual feed. Each section in here, if you've got three, four or five tier this is a five tier you fill it up to that mark and let it drain slowly and it just sits on top like all the others all right I've got two more um, supports to put on I'm probably going to add those later because I don't have anything in it I don't need them right at this moment so they would just be taking up more room and I've got my flowers to move things to do but you saw how easy the supports are right now I only need them for the Malabar and the tomatoes and peppers okay so Greenstalk also sent an insect net cover this is something I'm fixing to install because right now we're in the middle of insect problems and part of my problems with the carrots was worms so 
I don't want that to happen again. So while we've got it fresh, we're going to take and add this to it. It comes with a drawstring around the bottom so you can cinch it where they can't go up into it. And, hey, they've got two other covers for different things. But this is the insect cover. This is the one we needed. And it's kind of like putting on pantyhose. You get it up to the top. Put it around. And we're going to pull it around. And it goes over your supports, so you don't have to worry about that. And we're just going to readjust down these so I can get it through there. And... The way it's made, you just pour your water in the top. It's going right through the netting and does anything. It catches any trash, dirt, bugs, whatever. You're not going to get that into your system here. So I'm going to work my way around and adjust all this right quick. Okay, guys, this would be a lot easier to do if it was out on a patio or something like that. But because I have mine in the greenhouse, I'm having to work around a mini greenhouse. And for now, I want to leave it there because of the shade cloth and stuff and our intense heat. But this cover goes down. You can cinch it up around the bottom. Insects can't get in the bottom. They can't go through the top because it's sealed. It's all one piece except open at the bottom. And, hey... If it was out in the open on a patio, this would be a piece of cake to put together. But guys, green stalk. If you have a patio or a porch or a small area that you are wanting to garden in, you don't have much space, these things are the way to go. Keeps you in something fresh to eat off and on all the time. This is my salad stalk. We're going to have our tomatoes and peppers, Malabar spinach. Later we're going to be adding uh, romaine and things like that. Possibly some... Uh, radishes, anything for a salad will be added to this in the next little while. We can't do romaine right now because it's too hot, but when it's time, we've got the space. If you like the green stalk planter, it is a gravity fed. All you do is buy dirt from Walmart or wherever you get it. You want a, a soil that's full of uh, softness and fluffiness to put in here so that the water drains properly. This thing is amazing. And with their new netting and their new supports, hey, they've got it all covered. So check out the link below for Green Stock Planters. Order one today. They're always running sales. If you're in our Deep South Homestead Gathering Place on Facebook, I pop sales up over there all the time. Hey, great deals. So check them out. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.